Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. So this is, uh, I'm going to make it as short as possible. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about why I think NeoVim is a better editor and why I switched from Visual Studio Code to Vim. Uh, to show you guys what I really mean, let me actually clear the screen. So first of all, this is uh, what I use NeoVim for now. I'm using it for about a week and I think it's a really great editor. Now to show you what my config looks like, I'm going to do dot config and it's going to be in your home directory dot config slash nvim slash init.vim and this is the init.vim file which is actually used to set plugins, uh, to set key bindings, to set uh, number lines, syntax hiding and stuff like that. So this is my NeoVim config as you can see, nothing is special. Um, all I do is just add some plugins that are pretty useful and yeah that's what i do and it's just so much better using neovim instead of some other editor now i'm not saying that visual studio code is actually bad but it lacks at some points like it takes some time to actually load files or there will be some slight delay as your projects become larger and larger it's going to become a bit laggier and obviously you need to find a solution for that. You obviously don't want to use something like Notepad or even something like Nano, Gedit. I would recommend you to use NeoVim. Now there's nothing special about NeoVim compared to what Vim gives you. It's about two things more than what Vim, Vim gives you. Uh, but for people who want to try out Vim or even NeoVim, th those are both exactly the same things how to use them in Visual Studio Code. Well, actually, if you go into Visual Studio Code, in inside of extensions, you can go and search for uh, something known as Vim. And if you see the first option, as you can see, it's made by Visual Studio Code Vim or VS Code Vim. All you need to do is install it. I actually installed it already. What this does is it's going to allow you to code using Vim instead of the plain text plain way you actually could. I uh, can use Vim. Now it's going to make life much faster. But the thing is that it's not just enough to have Vim, but actually you need to have something that makes your workflow much faster. You don't have to use your mouse every single time. And some editors, including Visual Studio Code, have to do uh, has to actually use the mouse. The reason for that is because it's actually an IDE. It's not a Neo Vim or Vim. Neo Vim is configured to the way you like. Uh, you can actually navigate between around using key bindings. So let me show you some of them that I have included in my config, like Fn and F5. So this is going to launch Notary, and you can obviously navigate around using the HKL keys. It enter on something. It's going to show you all of the files. It enter, and as you can see right here, this is what we have. And you can, like, let's say, enter, hit enter on something. And as you can see, we are able to go into a new file. Now, again, uh, to actually navigate between panels, you, do, you don't have to use your mouse at all. So, for example, let's say you have the notary open, and you don't want to use your mouse, but use your keyboard to actually split between panes. So that's pretty simple. You hit Control WW, and it's going to do the job for you. You don't need to set a key binding for that. It's uh, the default key binding. And yeah, control www to navigate around and go with you. The config that I'm going to actually show you again. Uh, so if I actually do nvim in that vim, uh, we have some plugins like vterm. If I hit control T, this is going to launch something known as vterm. And now what this allows us to do is use terminal inside of Neo itself. So uh, if you don't believe me, we can actually write some commands. As you can see, I'm able to do a pfetch, and this is pretty simple for us. And we can obviously use it as if it is made by the Vim guys. So if I hit I, I'm going to go into the insert mode instead of the terminal. If I hit uh, escape, and I can actually navigate around. Um, so that's pretty simple. And again, you can hit Control T to toggle the terminal. The other uh, plugin that I'm going to show you is if I hit Control and F, you can see this is for the file manager. Uh, this is actually really useful. 
for people who want to navigate around and see what is inside of the files like the preview it's pretty cool as well why don't we go ahead and exit down and show you what exactly you need to do in order to get this uh, if i actually open up my firefox uh, if you go into this repository uh, vim plug which i'm going to link in the description what this allows us to do is instead of the config i actually added some plugins right using plug now in order to use plug you have to install vim plug in your operating system uh, for people who want to install it on unix or even linux based systems you need to copy this command this is for vim and there's obviously command for powershell in windows run it under administrator and for both linux and unix for NeoVim, you need to use this uh, command. And if you want to get the flat pack version, which is another type of package, you can use this. And for Windows, there is obviously the command for PowerShell. Uh, just go ahead and do that. Now, I'm going to release the config files in the description. I'm going to put them in the description. Uh, those are from GitHub. Those are my configs. So you'll get all of the NeoVim configs, the fish config, the ZSH. Uh, bash. I'm going to actually include tmux in a couple of days, but for now you'll uh, get like the new config and all you need to do is just copy this command and then put it right here and you should go ahead and install plug for you. And after you've done that, move your move the init.vim instead of my dot files directory to this one dot config slash nvim slash init.vim. And then all you need to do is do plug install and it should go ahead and install everything for you i already installed it now the good thing to note is that you can add plugins remove plugins uh, if you want to clean some of the unused plugins so if you deleted some plugins that you didn't like you can do plug clean what this actually does is it's going to remove some directories that are not used so uh, some plugin directories that don't exist at all and that is how you can get the config now let me show you an uh, example so if i go into my uh, directory of website uh, and this is next year's web application that i'm trying to make so as you can see we have syntax highlighting and we have code intelligence if i do import and as you can see we can go ahead and do something like i don't know head from next slash head as you can see we have code auto completion and we also have eslint enabled uh, the way you can actually do that is by going to the config again uh, there should be a line called yeah neo slide slash coc dot nvim what this allows us to do is have syntax highlighting and uh, also eslint enabled for javascript react css json and etc uh, the way you can actually enable this is if you go into your dot config slash nvim and go into coc dash settings.json this is the file that you need to have all you need to do is include all of these lines or you can include another la other languages if you want but for now all we have is format on sa uh, save file types so basically what this allows us to do is it's going to format as if it is prettier uh, so to show you an uh, example, if I go into here, so if the indentation is not right, and if I save it, as you can see, it's going to format on save. And again, you can enable it by using uh, these lines of code. And we also have ESLint file types. Basically, what the, what that does is if you have some error in your code, if you did some kind of mistake, it's going to show you an uh, error for you inside of uh, javascript and some other languages you have javascript typescript typescript react uh, javascript react for uh, react.js and typescript.tsx and in order to install all of those stuff all you need to do is if you go into command mode and you type in coc install uh, all one word and you do coc dash ds server you need to have coc dash css coc dash um, let's see json and if you actually hit enter it's going to install it and as you can see it already installed everything for us 
And if, if there is something that's not installed, it's going to finish it. And now when you relaunch re NeoVim, now you should have ASX syntax highlighting, ESGen support, and all of the other stuff as well. So that's all I want to talk about in this video because there's not too much to talk about. Again, just a recap of what I'm talking about. Uh, we have FNFY to launch Nerdry. I can navigate around without using the mouse at all. I mean, I didn't use the mouse at all in this video. As you can see, that's pretty simple. You can hit Control F for getting a fuzzy file manager. I included Control T for getting an V term. I guess that's the name. It's going to allow us to type commands inside of NeoVim, even though it's a terminal based application. And again, you can get my config by clicking the link in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, like, and I will see you in the next video.